Hi everyone, Adrian here. Welcome to Wild Bush and Grid. Today I'm going to try to make it short and sweet and we'll go over three different chronographs and definitely for a different budget as well, you know, low, medium, high. Uh, to make a long story short, if you have the budget, you run with the lab radar here. This is, you know, the top of the cream. This is the best chronograph I've ever used. But anyway, I understand that not everyone has the budget for the lab radar and especially if you're starting, you don't know if you want to invest that much money. So what are the trade-offs that you're making if you're going for a solution that is a little bit more uh, affordable? The first one I, I, I got is the, cut, the Cadwell here, chronograph, and it works, okay? It works, I've made load development with it. It's, I would say, accurate, you know, as far as I'm concerned. I never had another chronograph next to compare the level of accuracy of it. So depending on where you're shooting, you know, if, you, if you're at a gun range, um, me, the main problem I have with the chronograph is the setup, okay? When you arrive, usually the line of fire has to be closed. People are going up to set up their target. You have to uh, tell the, uh, the, 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 the person in charge of security that you're about to install a chronograph, so you have to go to the table, back and forth, making sure you're all aligned. People don't know what a chronograph is. You're taking longer than anyone else. People are like, what is he doing? You know, well, they want to shoot. They want the line of fire to open, and you're here going back and forth the chronograph table, trying to see if everything is aligned. So, uh, it's, but it works, okay? It, it uses a 9-volt battery, very simple to use. You can choose meter per second. Uh, feet per second you have a big screen actually even from a certain distance you can read it and also I didn't use that feature but you can like there's a cable to actually plug into your phone I think or I don't remember exactly where it was but I, I never use it I just put it in the field and just like uh, reading from the um, from the screen it's the cheapest to me as an entry point it's great um, to me the, the the main downside of it is the setup Oh, and once when I actually started, I put it too close to the table and I was using the 4570 and I blew off, <laughs> I blew off the, uh, the shade here, you know, this goes on top with the metal thing and those just what, first shot, everything flew off, I had to tell the guy, the security guy, hey, we need to stop the line, I need to go retrieve my shit and like, you know, everyone looking at me again, uh, who's this guy, what is he doing, what the hell is this thing? Anyway, great, super cheap, not my favorite, but it works. Uh, can I, will I be using it again, even if I have the other one? Actually, yes, I did. And there is a caveat to that because we will get to that in a second. Um, they don't do everything, okay? But I've done rifle 22 LR and a center fire rifle, I mean, 22 LR and also shotgun, bird shot as well with this, okay? The second one I got, I wanted a solution where I don't need to go in front of the table at the range to set up. So I was eyeballing at this, but the price was like, ah, deterring me a lot. So I went with the Sporter uh, Magneto Speed, and this is great, but there's a one huge caveat. Actually, no, there's two for this one. So the first thing I really like, it's super portable, okay? It's very small, you don't have a lot to travel, it comes with a nice little case, everything is encased in that case. And the only thing you need to do is you strap this to your, 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 your barrel, okay, at the muzzle, and you plug the, the screen here and you leave that on the table. And as you shoot, you record your velocity being displayed here. Uh, why is it not my favorite? Two reasons. The first one, it doesn't do 22LR. And I shoot a lot of 22LR and I like to see, compare my lots, you know, trying to read my standard deviation from the various 22LR uh, ammo that I can find, make sure if that batch is good or not. And uh, this is no bueno because 22LR is just too small for this thing. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't read. Uh, I did not try shotgun. Maybe it does, I don't know, uh, I didn't try it, so I cannot comment for that. The second thing is, because it's attached to your barrel, uh, you might get some interference with your 
uh, harmonics. So yes, you can shoot for velocity, recording, you know, testing standard deviation of your, of your loads or ammunition that you bought, but you cannot be sure 100% of the quality of the groups that you're getting. And that's just because it's something that is attached to the barrel and it will mess with the harmonics of your barrel, right? So we try, why, why do we have free floating barrels? It's because we don't want anything to interfere with the resonance, the vibe, you know, the, the, you know, the oscillation that happens as a bullet goes through and the, uh, the, the, the vibration in the barrel. And this definitely has a shift of a point of impact. And does it diminish accuracy? This is depending on each barrel. Maybe if you have like fat, heavy barrel, maybe not so much, but if you have a thin barrel, probably more. But that's something to, uh, to look for. So if you are really want to focus on accuracy as you're reading your speed, but you don't have the budget for a laborator, then I would suggest you go with the crony. If you want to shoot 20 lr don't get this one. You either go with the Labrador or, again, the Crony. Now, the king, the top, my favorite, is the Labrador here. Uh, they're not paying me to make this video, by the way, but I got this one with my, all of this with my own money. But this one is fantastic. All right, I get to the wrench, I just open my bag, open the tripod, I set it on in front of me, I align the target with the, the top here of the, um, there is a little notch here where you need to make sure that it's aligned with your target. You turn it on, you can link it to your telephone if you want, you don't have to. Turn it on, you press that record and you just shoot, you just shoot. You know, there is, of course, there's a certain distance you need to be and uh, some, uh, some, um, Thing. But to me, this is the best of all. Of course, it comes at that price point, which in Canada, it's um, you know, almost $900. Uh, in the US, maybe 600 and something. Uh, this one here in Canada was about two, almost 300, and this is like 100 bucks. So you see there's a huge gap, but this one, it's... what? So this one used AA battery, uh, actually six of them. You can do edit for four session before getting the low battery signal. And the good thing is you can actually plug an external battery through the USB port. So you can have like your one large USB battery on the side and then you can let it you know, on all day and shoot and shoot and shoot and never run out of, of battery. You can also add an SD card in it to record more and more, more data. Uh, everything is connected to your phone. So from your phone, you can export everything to Excel or Google Sheets, where you can concatenate all the data and, you know, sort, make, try to make sense of everything that happened at the wrench. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, this is what you're getting with uh, each one of them, which one is right for you. It's for you to decide. Uh, oh, and uh, I almost forgot to mention one of the best feature of the Labrador is it's actually track your projectile over a distance, you know, downrange, like to, uh, I think, 100 yards. Uh, you have the velocity at every, you know, you can set the, the number of steps that you want, but for example, you can get the velocity at 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, and so on. And the true, the true advantage of that is now you can actually get the actual ballistic coefficients of your projectile. This is great. You know, bullet manufacturer will put whatever number on their box to make sure that they beat the competition, but it doesn't mean that the ballistic coefficient that they're giving you is actually accurate, okay? There is a lot of components that goes into that calculation, and the only way for you to have the most, the highest level of prediction possible is to actually know the true ballistic coefficient of the projectile you're shooting with at the speed, at the twist rate that you're having, and this is why the Labrador, to me, is crown king of the chronograph. If you're shooting in your backyard at home, you don't have you know a lot of people waiting on you. I would maybe suggest start with a crony because you know no one is waiting on you and you can do whatever you want uh, when you're shooting in, in your backyard. Uh, if you're shooting at the range, these two options to me is better. If you're shooting 22, definitely not the magneto uh, magneto speed. 
and and that's it in a nutshell quick update on my thousand yard um reloading process i'm getting awesome awesome numbers uh i've done two video on the case prep the second one was on the ladder test and i can tell you with high confidence high confidence that my method is working if you want to shoot for precision and you're not sure where you're you know where you want to start watch my two previous video of this series as i fine tuning my load i did 15 shots at the last session and my standard deviation was at 7.4 okay 7.4 out of out of these 15 shots there was two outliers that if i remove these two data points my standard deviation is lowering to 4.5. This is mental. I never had that in my, in my life. So I must be doing something right. And if you want to, you know, hop on the train, see how I'm getting it. Uh, there are other videos for that series in coming. And actually pretty soon, by the, near the end of the month, I'm going out up there, up north, shooting that thousand yard shots that I promise you folks. Uh, my group size right now is about half MOA. I wish it was a little bit better, you know, I was hoping for a quarter, three, eight, but uh, half, half him away right now is uh, the, you know, the good average, okay, uh, and the, I know I can lower that a little bit more, I think a little bit more sitting depth test, I will make a video on sitting depth alone pretty soon, and I will explain my process, and also right now at the, at the range, I'm shooting seated, but for the thousand yard shot, I'm probably going to shoot prone, so I think I'm going to shrink those groups uh, a little a little bit more so right now half moa i'm sure my setup can do a little bit better i need to improve on my own shooting to get there and that's it folks this is where this one ends hit that like button subscribe if you have not already if you like this type of content let youtube know and that helps me helps you you know it's a going for circle here and i need all the help i can get to keep on continuing putting content out there for you folks so thank you so much for your support and i'll see you in the next video bye bye